Hello guys, I'm Billy McDaniel, also known as Almighty Games Dev. And what I'm going to be doing today is making a 3D low-poly table. And it doesn't sound that exciting, but I picked something very simple. But you'd be surprised how many steps actually go into making even something as simple as a table. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to give myself exactly 10 minutes. I got my stopwatch all set and ready to go here. I'm just going to hit start and then we're going to get started. I've already got this object in the scene. So what I'm going to do just as a little head start is just go ahead and create a cube in advance before I even get started here. And I'm going to put that material on it. Scale this to zero and just set that into one of these wood tone colors and I think I'm good to go. There, with that done, let's go ahead and get started. So, again, ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, we're off. So we're gonna scale this on the Z by 0.05. And let's see, grab this on the Z. We'll snap this up to this line because the head is pretty much up in this area over here. And what I want to do is, well, this is going to be the tabletop surface, but we're going to make the legs before we start making the individual boards. And we can actually make the legs right out of this. So Shift D to duplicate that. Control 7 to go to bottom view and scale this down to about the size of our legs, which is about 0.08. And I'll go ahead and grab that and snap it over into one of the corners like this. And probably the easiest way to do this is make one leg and then duplicate it. So let's go ahead and extrude this and bring it down to the bottom here. It's got to be actually touching that red line. So grab Z. There we go. Control plus sign a couple times. Back to bottom view with Control 7. Shift D to duplicate. And we'll snap this over here. L to link select both of those. Shift D again. And we'll snap a copy over here. Now the next thing I want to do is add something that makes this look a little bit more organic. I'm going to add a couple of loop cuts here and there. Maybe I'll add two on this one. And all I'm going to do is uh, just one by one rotate these a little bit and just shift it off to the side. And I want to change my view every single time that I do this so that, you know, every time I uh, grab this and nudge it over, it's going in a slightly different direction so that they're not all leaning in the same direction. That's the idea here. All right. So once we've done that, another thing that we can do too is maybe scale a couple of them. And I'll use individual origins for this. So just scale them so that they're not perfectly straight. Maybe I'll scale this one out a little bit instead of in. There we go. All right, so we've got some legs that look a little bit more organic. Another thing that I want to do to these is add some imperfections. But before we get that far, let's go ahead and select the top here in top view. And I'm going to scale this on the X so it looks more like a board. And we're going to do the same kind of thing with this board. So we have a couple of loops in here. I'm just going to, maybe I'll do this in top view. Just grab this and move it over here a little bit and rotate it. Also, don't be afraid to move it up and down. So I'm just going to grab that just a tiny little bit like this. And again, rotating it doesn't have to be perfectly on center. Notice how it warped it a little bit. So that's also a good idea. All right. Finally, the next thing I want to do is use vertex. Uh, actually, what is it? I want to use a um, bevel. I want to use a bevel tool. I'm going to select a couple of these vertices. I got a little confused because I was selecting a vertice while I was trying to descri describe what I was doing. So I'm going to select a few of these. I don't want to overdo it, but a few verts here and there. And I think that's probably plenty. Control B to bevel and then hit V to use vertex beveling. And I don't want to go too far, probably about that far right there. Before I go any further, let's go over to our UV editing, and I just want to move this over to a lighter shade of brown. So I'm just going to grab that and move it over here, then go back over to my layout. Now, because all those faces are selected, it only changed those colors. Control T to triangulate those. That'll make it so it actually indents. And let's see what else can we do. Um, let's go to face selection. Actually, let's use vertex selection. G and then G again to follow the edge. 
And we'll do this on a few of these. You don't have to do it on all of them, but definitely a couple just to kind of mix things up. Looks like I grabbed both of those off the same. Uh, that's okay. Once in a while, do something like that. All right, so that's probably good enough for the dents and scratches and nicks and stuff. Let's go ahead and move on. We want to take this, I'm going to link select that, and duplicate it. And I'm just going to make a copy over here and rotate it in the opposite direction. Another thing I could do is rotate it this way as well. Something like that. And I'll take both of those and duplicate those. And we'll do the same kind of thing. Maybe this time I'll scale it on the X by negative one and then shift N to recalculate those normals. So we have a mirror image of those. I might even change the order of them around. So we'll just move this over here instead. Just trying to mix things up as much as I can. Other thing I'll probably do is turn on my X-ray. That's Alt-Z. And let's see, let's use edge selection. Just gonna move some of this stuff around a little bit so it doesn't look quite so predictable. You know, I don't want to see a pattern at all. That's the idea. We want to get rid of anything, anything that looks like a pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and link select all of those and I'm just going to center them. Actually, let's bring them off to the side and duplicate that again. I think I'll rotate the whole thing around this way. And it looks like I have an extra piece so we can just delete that one. All right, now this would be fine if we were cool with the fact that everything is just floating in space. So let's go ahead and resolve that. I'm going to duplicate this and rotate it 90 degrees. And let's take a look at this from the bottom. Control 7, actually from the side, because I want to grab this on the Z and pull it down to about here. Now let's look at the bottom. And I think what I'll do is scale this on the X, because I want this to fit nicely inside of here. I think it's a little bit too wide this way, so let's scale that on the Y. And also while we're at it, let's scale it on the Z to make it a little narrower as well. Now we can fit that in there nicely. I think it went a little bit too far, maybe something like that. We'll duplicate it, bring it over here, and I want to do the same kind of thing. Maybe we'll just rotate it in the opposite direction on this side. Some of these boards could probably be a little bit longer, so I'm going to scale those out a little bit. Probably better to do all of them at the same time. Yeah, something like that. Okay, um, let's see what else we got here. How much time do we got left? We got two and a half minutes, 2.45, something like that. There's still quite a few things that we could do here. For example, maybe change some of the sizes of these notches here so we can scale this down a little bit so that they're not all exactly the same size. I think I'll add a couple of more nicks and scratches, maybe even just uh, move some of this stuff around like this. Oh, one thing I did forget is I forgot to put the color change on the ends of all my boards. So let's do that. Probably get the bottoms here as well. Back to our UV editing workspace and just grab that and move it over here. By the way, good idea too. Select all and then select all the light colors and scale them back to zero again. That puts all the UVs back together. You don't have to do that, of course, but you know every bit counts. So, I mean, actually this looks pretty good to me. I'm not sure what else I could do. I think, hmm, maybe we can make the support beams look a little bit more realistic. Uh, I think what I'll do is add one more beam in the middle and elongate it. Maybe I'll scale that on the Y by negative one and then flip the normal so it's shift in. And another thing that's bugging me about this is the notches up there, which doesn't really make much sense. So I'll just rotate this thing around in the opposite orientation so that the notches underneath 
There's no point in showing that otherwise. Jeez, I mean, 10 minutes is probably too much. I'm not really not sure what to do beyond this. This is a finished table. I suppose I can make chairs if I get enough time. I don't think under a minute is enough time, but there you go. Under 10 minutes. The under 10 minute challenge. We made a table. I think I'm out of ideas. Um, look, I got a few seconds. I could probably do something else. Maybe, um, maybe we can use the knife tool and just cut a little nick into it like this. And then, let's see, maybe we extrude that in, scale it, and then add the color. So that's just another way to add, hey, there we go. Just another way to add a little bit more visual flair to it. One thing I probably could have done to make that look just a little bit better is maybe, uh, let me just show you, turn on your merge vertices over here and also turn on your vertex snapping and then just grab that and snap this over here so that we end up with something a little less, you know, perfect. This would probably be enough, just leave it like that. You don't have to do anything like that, of course, but anything you can to add a little bit more visual flair is going to be better. You know, something like this, maybe. There we go. And I think we're ready to finish this up. So that's it. I got a little bit of a workout there, and we ended up with a nice little table or part of a chair that we could use for our you know, props in our 3D models. So this is what I created first. It looks almost identical to the one I created after. Actually, I like the second one better. So maybe there's a lesson in there, you know. Usually when you do things a couple of times, your later attempts are always going to be a little bit better. With a little bit of practice, you get better. Even just one model to the next. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell notification icon. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. Other than that, you know, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.